Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a 98 F-150 and it runs terrible. <laughs> it's basically uh, what's going on. It, it's misfiring real bad. Uh, we got misfire codes for three, four, and seven, and then a lean code. Um, I've, I've looked into the, uh, the ignition system just a little bit. Uh, I got some secondary patterns from the, the two coils. And I think we got some separate issues there, but as far as like this lean condition, uh, this fuel system is definitely in need of attention. For one, the, uh, the hose that goes into the fuel rail is uh, seeping, I guess you'd say. Uh, you can smell fuel. The, uh, the little Schrader valve on the test port is, is also seeping. You can see the fuel. So that's like a safety concern. That's, it, it very well may be affecting the pressure. I mean, it's not spewing, it's not, um, you know, it's not pouring anywhere, but it, uh, it's definitely a problem. I want to get some quick fuel pressure measurements just to, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a lean condition and it's misfiring. So, um, I want, I want to see what condition the, the system is in, the pumps in and, uh, so I can rule that out. Just got my gauge set here. Uh, it's up to the, the, the main bleeder gauge comes with it. And then it's hooked up to the, uh, the forward adapter. It's just like a little Schrader valve and uh, the test port is just right down in there out of sight. So I think you can see it there on the fuel rail. Uh, so I'm going to crank the key over a couple times and then I'm going to go bleed out the, the gauge. Uh, I'm going to do that like two times until um, I feel like there's no air in the system uh, because it'll skew the readings. So... Um, I'm gonna do that and then start it up and we'll take some measurements. And that's a really, really rapid drop. So when I have this thing running, uh, it's a vacuum operated pressure regulator. And it is a, it's a return type system. So if I take that off, um, it should the the pressure should increase and and you know plug the vacuum um, or else you know it's going to skew other things um, it'll for one it'll give it a vacuum leak <laughs> mess with your uh, scan data you know if you're looking at fuel trims i'm going to snap throttle and you should see the the, the fuel pressure rise uh, you know, but the engine's in need of more fuel and, and uh, the pump should deliver. The spec on this is, I think it was at 30. Um, so we're, we're, we're running at about 29. So you know, sometimes that matters. But on this, I don't know. But so now what we're going to do is I'm going to give it throttle and we're going to watch that gauge. And then it drops. Uh, I believe we have a. Uh, so it, 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 there's definitely a fuel pressure issue. Uh, you know, we're running lean, especially on bank one, according to the scan data. So um, that is, you know, the spec said, you know, 30 to 80. You know, when I see the pressure drop like that, we got an issue. I, you know, I don't care if it's just a few PSI, five PSI, one PSI, I don't care if it, we shouldn't be losing pressure. Um, you know, that's where you get these lean conditions. Um, so that's part of it. And then also, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to test that fuel pressure regulator. So we're going to watch the gauge. I'm going to un unhook the vacuum line going to it it's a, it's a vacuum regulated system and 
uh, you should see it jump. And uh, you look at the, the little nipple right at the uh, the regulator. You don't want to see fuel coming out of it, or you know that that that, that it's, it's shot. The, the diaphragm in there shot and it's leaking, um, and that would be an issue. You know, if it was a regulator problem. So, so we kind of put the gauge there. I think it'll be easier for us to see. Uh, so I'm going to reach down there. This that is our fuel pressure regulator. It's right on the fuel pressure for the fuel rail. So you can kind of see going up in there. I'm going to unplug this, uh, unhook it, whatever, and that'll create a vacuum leak as well. You can watch the field trim data and um, it should go clean, you know, if you're, if you're looking for O2 sensor problems or something of that nature. You can hear it hissing. Alright, so now we're, now we're right at 40. I'm going to put it back on. Drop. So our regulator is working. You know, I just took it off again. It's on. You know, I'm just. Alright, so we'll take this a step further. Um, I'm gonna hook up my fuse buddy to this fuse 19 20 amp fuse, and well, let me see here. Oh. I can just zoom in. That should give you guys a so, shot. That goes over through this relay to the pump. And uh, let's see here. Just to show you guys. Um, so, yeah. There's going to be our fuel pump module. Um, power goes through this inertia switch. And then this dark green wire goes through to pin two uh, into diagram two right here so that's going to be it goes to the fuel pump relay so you know when that contact closes that's going to bring us back to this fuse 19 and i should be able to get an amperage reading from that and uh, measure the fuel pump rpm just to give me an idea of the physical condition of it and you know we need to figure out why that fill pressure is bleeding off so quick um that's that's uh that that's going to be the source of our lean condition so we need to just dive a little deeper okay so i just went through entirely too much work to <laughs> make this happen um my fuse buddy it did not have a uh adapter or i lost it or <clears throat> i don't know anyways um I just ran some uh, jumper wires over to here uh, from some various adapters and then I'll be able to hook my amp clamp up there and get an amperage measurement of this uh, fuel pump. It's getting set up here, it's pretty windy. Uh, I'm to try to get this done anyways. Uh, I got these cool little uh, magnetic uh, mounts for the leads uh, to go right up against the body. Uh, pretty sweet these from Joe's Auto Electric. Um, he's got all kinds of neat stuff. So I just got a one channel there and loading it up. But you can see those little clips. Um, they just keep everything in place, you know. So I'm gonna switch this to the uh, 20 amp and I'm gonna put it, just, just clip it over that. So that'll give me an amperage reading on that fuel pump and we'll be able to see what all it's doing. Um, I'm gonna try to get this set up and hopefully there's not a ton of gra glare and uh, we just need to get a quick measurement here. So I'm just gonna set up my probe here, uh, the 20 amp scale and I think we're pretty much good to go. Like I said, we just clipped that over there and you know, my only doubt is these I mean, these leads, I don't know what else to do. They, uh, I don't have an adapter, so I don't want to crawl under there and, and cut open a harness and find that wire. Uh, I looked, there's, there's nothing easily readily available, so hopefully this works for us. You know, I also just wanted to mention, you want, you want to zero it. Put on your scale and zero it. Well, 
it's working. He's still be able to save this capture and then we can analyze it in a little bit. Um, that's actually a pretty good capture, so. Um, kind of mess with the time there. long capture so I am going to go give it some throttle and see what happens I'm gonna do that uh, off camera and then we'll just analyze this pattern so you can see it chugging along there uh, I had that I had it reverse so I'm just getting another capture See, we're at about four amps. So on that first capture, uh, it was just too too long of a time base, and it was it was hard to zoom in. Uh, anyways, so I got another capture, a shorter capture, and this is actually me zooming in on that. I'll show you guys. So that's what it looked like, and uh, right now, uh, let's see here. So that's what it looks like zoomed in. And what we're looking at right here is the commutators on the fuel pump. If I can get an image to uh, kind of describe this a little better, uh, I will, but I'm gonna do my best. Inside the fuel pump, there's, you know, uh, it'll have various commutators. Most of them are eight for uh, domestic vehicles. So let's just uh, take that rule of thumb and each one of these peaks, you're looking at those commutators. So if you got a burnt up one, uh, which, you know, it looks like we do. Um, this definitely doesn't look like a clean pattern to me. Uh, we're gonna look at a known good here in a minute, but uh, so get your rulers and look for, uh, you know, just the, uh, the points that they look, uh, you know, repeatable. So, you know, you can see right here, you know, that real, real low spot um, on both. And oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so, you know, not only can you look at the commutators, but you you can get the RPM on that pump. So. The formula for that is 60,000 divided by the time in between these two points. Uh, <clears throat> one phase, one rotation of the, the pump. Um, that's the calculation. Now, this is pretty cool. Uh, Pico does that for you. You can see 10.11 milliseconds. Now you're going to divide that by 60 and that will get, or 60,000 and because that's how many milliseconds are in a minute so um there you have it that's your number 5933 rpms on that fuel pump uh i'm not sure i, I mean that that seems about right uh it, it seems you know right within the window i'm gonna have to do a little research i can't remember exactly but uh, so at idle you know, key on engine running. Now remember, That's we were wanting to check our powers and grounds for the pump. So, if that pump is pulling four amps, uh, you know, give or take a little bit there. You know, you can see right there. That's the amperage. Uh, the pump's working. Um, you know, it's got its powers and grounds. So. So I just did some quick research and that is uh, pretty typical, four to six amps. Um, any Anything, you know, 
less than that, you know, let's say it was, you know, pulling two amps, uh, you know, that's not sufficient to run that. Uh, that so I was able to get this out of the Pico library. Uh, this, this is going to be a known good. <laughs> you can see it's way different. Um, yeah, that pump we got in there, that's garbage. So that's going to be the source of our low fuel pressure. Um, you can see just straight drop offs on it where there is no, the, the commentators are burnt up in that sucker. Um, all of them looks like it. Uh, so let me get the, uh, the measuring. Uh, let me take some measurements here and get the RPM just for uh, shits and giggles of what should a uh, normal one look like. Uh, this is it's from a 99 F-150 at idle, same conditions. Zoomed in a little bit more and uh, you can see we're drawing about the same amperage. It's uh, right around four amps. Uh, hey there. <laughs> That's my partner today. So there you go. That's our RPM. We're almost at eight grand there. Uh, so yeah, if you count these humps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And a low spot to low spot there. I just kind of found some areas that looked uh, unique and repeatable. And that's how you do that. So, you know, there you go. You know, let this be a lesson. Uh, yep, it starts, it runs, but that pump is weak. And that's what's causing this lean condition. So there you have it. Uh, we got to the bottom of this lean condition. It's definitely, without a doubt, a weak pump. Uh, you could see those commutators were just burnt to a crisp. And, uh, you know, that's enough for me uh, with all the symptoms it's exhibiting. Now, nevertheless, there's still a misfire concern. I don't know whether it's caused by this lean condition or it's just a separate issue, but uh, I'm going to dive deeper into that. I took some uh, secondary measurements a couple days ago and... I, w I wasn't happy with them. Uh, you know, it looked like some of the, the spark, you know, some of the plugs, it, the, it wasn't, uh, the spark wasn't jumping the gap and, and a couple of other, the readings, you know, kind of indicate the coil shorted. So I'm going to dive a little deeper into that. That'll be part two coming up here in a couple days. So stay tuned. So we're already almost at a thousand subscribers here. It's crazy. Uh, I'm hoping to get there with this video. So Show your support. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.